Ooh, this one's tricky. This one's tricky. So, hi. Um, I wanted to talk about special edition sets, like deluxe editions and stuff like that, because I previously, like, maybe a month ago by now, did a video uh, where I showcased my two deluxe editions, that being the Shaun of the Dead, Everything Blue uh, exclusive steelbook and whatnot, and the, I think it was HMV uh, Blade Runner um, 2049 set. The non steelbook version, and I mainly want to talk about this because I slightly talk about it to some degree in that video in the middle of the video because apparently we're not just doing let's show the audience what we got, we're also going to do an expose. Uh, journalism at its finest. I did not study journalism, um, and so I just kind of wanted to kind of at least give my thoughts on them because I'm not very savvy with. Deluxe editions. Deluxe editions are really incredible, to be completely fair. Like, the in terms of a personal history of deluxe editions as a concept, the best I had was music deluxe editions and, like, some of the box sets I have up here. And they're not even really deluxe editions. They're just special edition sets, more or less. What is wrong with my shoulder today? This is more or less deluxe editions in terms of the big shit. This is like the one clicks, the big, you know, Kamichi DVD and um, HMV and all, all those big brand stuff. This ain't no Criterion Godzilla set. Nah, nah, nah. That's just fancy ass labeling. This is the big ass shit that you gotta get from fucking the Czech Republic and China and Korea and it is crazy the amount of stuff. I think even Nova Media is kind of like that. There's, there is so much. I think, what was the one that I saw? I, I'm on Reddit and uh, I watch. I look at a lot of um, steelbook posts and Blu-ray stuff, and some guy posted about the Birdman Blu-ray, a special edition version. I'm like, hey, it looks pretty good. I might see if I can find one. Of course, they're upwards of a hundred bucks. Which is a big thing when it comes to deluxe editions. They're fucking expensive. Like, I was lucky with the Shaun of the Dead one because it was a big percentage off, which that's why everyone went for it anyway. I was like, hey, look, you know, Everything Blue is doing this big sale for the Cornetto Trilogy. You know, buy what you want, you know? And so I did, and I bought the only thing that I wanted from it, which I really appreciate, I really like, and it's sitting right there behind the camera just staring at me. It's beautiful. And then, of course, my deluxe edition of the Blade Runner 2049. Now, again, these deluxe editions isn't, at least hardly ever, a big superfluous amount of special features on the DVDs and stuff like that. No, 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 no. In fact, oh, I spelled it wrong, didn't I? Yes, I did. I, that feeling when you spelt, spelt still book with a I, so it's still spoik. Uh, Film Arena is also another one. That's what I was looking for. So, my Blade Runner one is, again, the whole idea of it is I already have the three discs. It did come with, like, two extra special features that I did not have, which I love. <laughs> but, you know, it was obviously a big surprise when I found out that in the video. I'm like, what the, t oh my, God. you know, big thing, wow. Um, but to my knowledge, most special, you know, special editions shit like this, the one clicks and whatever, it's about the packaging. It's not about the film. And that's what I find rather interesting. Like, when you compare that to something like Criterion or Arrow Video, which they do have their more deluxe editions, if you will. Uh, maybe they'll have, like, a first pressing comes with a big essay and a slip cover, that kind of deal. Not much for Criterion. They really always come with that stuff anyway because they're not about limited versions of their stuff. They're more about the best version for everyone until they more or less sell out and go out of print because, you know, they can't have the rights to everything all the time, which is disappointing. But something like, obviously, their Godzilla set or their latest Bruce Lee set and stuff like that are obviously much more being Big Bang stuff. It's, oof, it's, wow, it's huge. I love it. It's a lot more money, but it's a lot more, you get a lot more out of it, which is the whole fucking point of deluxe sets. And so I like that. Like, even though Arrow Video and Criterion have their yeah, we just have our regular stuff and whatever. We'll do our fancy stuff. We'll do our essays and our posters and our, a lot of special features to do with, you know, 
commentaries or video essays and however you be in. But when it comes to something like HMV or, again, like Nova or whatever the fuck it is, there was a lot of them. I don't know all of them. I apologize. Again, I'm not 100% savvy on them because I don't, I don't even own any of them. Like, the best I have is the Everything Blue and the HMV, which I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a bloody HMV anyway. But just the, the fact, and that's even, this is the Blade Runner one, and that's actually a re-release. Like, the original release is actually a steel case uh, that, didn't, that didn't, to my knowledge, didn't even come with, like, the poster or anything. Like, it was just a steel case deluxe edition set with a booklet and whatever. So I think I actually got the better of the, the whole thing, because as it is, steel books can often be quite dodgy. Sometimes they can rattle or they can break quite easily. They're, like, really precious for what they're trying to be. Like, they're, they're trying to be really protective of the, of the discs, but then them themselves can almost be completely inadequate if one thing goes wrong in shipping. You get a small dent, you can get scratched really easily. There is a lot of things that can go wrong with a steel case, and it's a fucking burden. Wow. Not to mention the J-cards. Whoa, that's a whole different topic. And so, just as it is, look, I admire the people who go out of their way to buy these big deluxe sets. It's great, good for you. I don't, I, I mean, I don't personally care to get it myself. If I fucking wanted to, yeah. Like, I would. there's stuff I've heard about, like the Blade Runner one or Alien. There are films like that that I would have killed to get that kind of a goddamn special edition set. But the thing is, even when I do find out about it, I don't think I've checked up the Alien one on on eBay yet. Oh no, I don't, I'm going to do that after this video. Oh my god, I'm going to spend even more money. Jesus, I'm trying to save. Uh, anyway, the point being is that, like, if I found that way after this shit came out, and it's disappointing, you know. If I find out in the year 2020 that all this shit came out in 2017, and it all sold out in 2017... I'ma be pissed. So I was, of course. I was angry. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, you know. But, you know, it's shit happens, you know. It's... Because sometimes you just have to appreciate the quality of the film that you get. Do you have the highest quality disc? Yeah, I got the 4K of Alien. I got the 4K of Blade Runner. Okay, cool. Do you really need anything else? No, not really. I am adequate. I am contempt. I am happy with what I have. In theory, at least. You know, but at the same time, it's nice to have a good-looking set to just put on the shelf and whatever. Maybe to frame it, maybe to put it in a glass case or whatever. It's a nice stuff, and I like that. I especially like the one-clicks, the idea of just like, hey, we've got two to three editions of this thing, maybe, I don't know, usually two editions, and to put it face-to-face, and I love how they display the images too. You got from top to bottom. This is what the outside of the case looks like. You got the front cover. You got the back cover. Maybe this one's lenticular. Maybe this one's embossed. And then, so like there are your two different alternatives pretty much straight away. That's like what we had for everything blue for Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz and World's End. Of course, you've got the big box at the end, which combines both of these two into one. So you can have them both in a bigger box. Wow. So at least if you want to sell for Steelbook, you can because, you you know, why not? But at the same time, you've got, we'll get into that. And of course, you know, you dive into your small tiers of it. You've got the basic stuff of, obviously, the box. You know, which version do you want to get? It's got different artwork, got different texture to it. Then you get your second layer, which is pretty much what's inside the box on the outside. So you've got the, I'd say, steel case for now. So you've got your steel case. It's identical. Okay, cool. So both steel cases are identical. That's pretty much what they do. It makes it easier, makes it more fun for everyone. Uh, I mean, there are probably people who would argue, oh, damn, I wish, you know, this version, I wish they had did a different design for one of the steel cases, so then they're both completely exclusive and completely different. But then there's, I don't know, maybe there's just no, not as much fun in that. Either way, I don't really mind. I, I think I like the idea of you both get the same steel book, but what you get on the inside is what's different, and what you get on the outside is what's different. So, of course, the outside packaging, lenticular, or embossed, debossed, and on the inside of the steel book, outside of whatever other booklets you might get, which sometimes you might get a booklet. I didn't get a booklet with the um, Shaun of the Dead one, but they didn't make one with a booklet. They just made a steel case with the extra case on the outside. And then inside the steel case, you had a whole bunch of extra special stuff. You had two art cards, 
which are like pretty good size, like postcard size almost, probably smaller. And then you had like collector cards, which have like five to six of them, which are just images from the film, which same as the art, uh, the postcard thingy. And then on the back, it just has the logo of the film. And it's simple as that, really. Like you get this little card to say what edition it is. And that's it. That's the whole shebang, you know. And that's quite nice. You know, sometimes you might get probably, maybe you won't get art cards, but you'll get bigger uh, cards of shots from the films or shots of the characters or whatever. Like, there's a Blade Runner 2049 steel case from Kamichi DVD that I would love to get. I'm never going to get it. It costs 124 bucks, which is, you know, Australian dollars. That's quite nice. It's a quite a cheap price, to be completely fair, in contrast to a lot of the stuff. Why do I personally want it? I probably just want it for the steel case. But then on the inside, you still get like six different images that are all from the, of the characters and whatever, which is quite cool. It's just images that you see in the film or promotional stuff. It's not too bad, you know. And then you go further and further along. There's just the outside of... Because it's actually a slip cover for the steel case and the slip cover is lenticular and you get the card for it. And I'd like it, but... I'm really happy with the version I got, which was a lot cheaper and came with a lot more stuff that I personally appreciated more. It was an interpretive look of the, you know, of the world of the film. You know, that's what the outside of both versions look like with the Deckard on the front, um, Deckard on the back and uh, Agent K on the front. Got this whole world behind them and stuff like that instead of it just being, look, it's them, just the one person with, uh, you know, say the Steelbook, for example, is just, you've got Agent K with his car on one side, nothing else there, and on the back you've got Deckard with the a statue that's fallen over behind him. And that's it. You've got different colours, and that's it. It's, a, it's still a nice design. I like the inside, having it be my favourite scene of the film where Joy tells... K that he's worthless. It's great. I love it. It's my favorite. <laughs> of course, my version came with, which again you can see in my deluxe video uh, where I display everything that's in it. It did come with art cards, but well, they're postcards more or less. Uh, actually, they are postcards, but they're all designed by Matt Ferguson. So that's again an interpretation of the film, which I love because I love his artwork. And it came with a poster and it came with a booklet. So there's a lot more to it than the simple stuff. Of course, the one clicks is you get these two special edition versions, you combine them, and then boom, you put them in a big box, which has its own unique artwork. And hence, I believe that's why it's called a one click, because it's like, instead of deciding, I'm gonna click on this one and then buy that, and I'm gonna click on this one, and I'm gonna add that on the card. It's like, no, nope, fuck it, click once, you bought the whole thing. The, you ate the whole plate. It's simple as that, you know? And it's a nice idea. These things can get really expensive, and that's really the only burden to it. It's if you are a passionate filmophile, filmophile, film, film addict. I don't. Jeez, what the hell do we call ourselves again? I haven't seen a movie in such like in the cinema in such a long time, so I forgot what the hell people who cinephile. That's what I'm looking. It's still not a great name, but you know, it's probably better than film addict. You know, cinephile sounds a bit. Uh, uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, it's, if you're a big cinephile, it's a great thing to be able to be like, hey, I love this film, or hey, I love this edition of this film, and I really still like this film as well, I'm going to get this edition of this film, because it looks so great, you know, there are films that I have casually on Blu-ray, or casually on DVD, that I see these big sets for, and I'm like, oh my god, it's gorgeous, I'd love to own it, but what's the point in the end like uh, unless I'm really upgrading or getting something better of a disc quality which most of the time I could be because it's usually like a blu-ray or a 4k but at the same time I'm pretty contempt with what I've got and also I like to save money I don't do it but I like the idea of it <laughs> sounds nice you know it's like that kind of thing of like you got 150 bucks to spend. Do you spend it on one thing only with maybe five to ten dollars to spare? Or, and you know, go, go get yourself some Maccas or whatever. Or do you spend it on, you know, five or six smaller things and maybe you have more money to spare or maybe you just spend it all on all these other things that you want instead of this one big thing. That was actually my decision to not get the steel case for Blade Runner 2049. 
week because I'm like, ah, I got $150 and I could spend $126 on this special edition version, which comes with a look at the card and the limited editions. Oh, you know, great. I could put it on my shelf and everyone will be like, why do you have two versions of Play Runner 2049? And I'll be like, I don't. I have four because I've got the Blu ray and the 4K separately. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, that's going to be a question of law itself. And then, let's not even talk about it. Actually, let's talk about it. Let's talk about how you could go even further. Blade Runner 2049 in particular has a great deluxe edition. It's deluxe edition, which is can cost 600 to to $1,000 now. Whoa. Already that's a... <laughs> um... <laughs> It comes with a replica of, I believe it's Kay's gun. It might be Deckard's gun, but I'm pretty sure it's Kay's gun. And it comes with even a stand for it as well. It comes with two shot glasses. It comes with so much shit. There are so many editions of so many films that it's incredible how they do it. And I, I, uh, like, I really should do more research into these kind of things. Not for the fact of talking about them in videos, but just for my own well-being of, like, understanding, you know, who's commissioning them and all this kind of stuff. Is it the kind of, oh, we, we're going to get the rights like Criterion does for certain films or, like, Arrow Video does for other films and is able to, you know, reprint those and, like, oh, or maybe it's, like, say, they've got the Spider-Man films, the, you know, the Spider-Man Homecoming and Far From Home, and it's, like, so, they like, they do a deal with Disney to be like, hey, we'll do a big deluxe edition of this film. You still get most of the money because it's from, you know, it's your film. But we get the money because, uh, as well because we're making and, you know, we're getting an artist to design this box and these other little sets that come in it. And we're, you know, like, who's the big profiter, maybe? I don't know. I don't think it's a really an important thing. It's more or less who's going to collect it is a real big deal. Because there are films that have these really big, immense sets. And I'm like, why do you, these films need these big, immense sets? Like, have you seen the Akira one? It is huge. Like, that thing is a, it's the size of a vinyl, because it comes with a vinyl. And that's not even, like, that's just a special edition version. It's not even, like, a deluxe brand. It's just a special edition version. And I think it's fucking mental. But yeah, I think the overall end or be all to this is just... And again, this is just my thought process thinking about these things. Because again, I haven't got any outside of the two that I've already displayed in the previous video. And I just... I mean, eventually, yeah, if I end up buying something more dramatic in terms of like a really big fucking one click or some shit. Which I'd love to do that one day. That just seems like... Something that would suit my shelf really well and suit kind of, you know, my own style really well. Buy a one click of a film you really like, great. But all of the films I love, they already have their big editions, except for Evil Dead 2 and like Swiss Army Man, pretty much. I don't think, I think Scott Pilgrim got an Everything Blue release, it, but that hasn't found any other releases. Um, Guess I'm not getting a steel book of that film. Should have got on that one that's seventeen dollars and savvy. God, I, I kind of regret it, but not really. So yeah. Look, uh, if you got if you know of these deluxe sites, or if you know of a YouTuber who has more detail and conversation about it, then hey, feel free to chuck you know links or however it be in those comment sections because I'd like to you know open my eyes more to this kind of stuff. Uh, if it means that my bank account's gonna fucking hate me, then that's just the price we gotta pay. Which is ironic, because I'm already pr like, it's not, that's a moral price. The actual price is a lot bigger. Probably. Maybe. I'd say. Yeah. But you know. Look, I, again, like I was saying at the start of the video, I grew up with these big sets. I'm looking at them right now. Like, my dad, who's a big Beatles fan, will buy big sets and editions of remasters and re-releases of Beatles stuff like the amount of Beatles stuff he has he has the Abbey Road 50th anniversary he's got the Beat the Sergeant Pepper's 50th anniversary he's got this big set for the Magical Mystery Tour and Help he's got this big John Lennon box set the the White Album he's got so much big sets and again this is I mean to some degree actually to most of the degree to be completely fair it's usually new content to some degree. Like sometimes they're big sets that have 
bonus behind the scenes recordings and stuff like that that you've never heard. So if you're not an av- if you're a music listener that you don't give a shit about that kind of stuff, it's like watching like behind the scenes stuff on a DVD commentary or documentary and stuff. If you don't give a shit for it, then you just buy the film when it's ready in the package and you go along with it. Same with a CD. You buy the CD, you go along with it. Who cares about the rest of it? Or you just stream it. <laughs> but seeing these big sets come in the mail and just just the the pride and joy that he has in opening these sets up and looking at them and whatever it is extraordinary and to be fair i've listened to a lot of this music i love the beatles so listening to remixed versions of older songs that are differently mixed you know say it's gone from mono to stereo maybe say they've rearranged some of the instrumentation from like oh the drums were over here now now they're over here or now they're spread out or however it be he's has much better lingo in this kind of stuff because he's listened to these songs so many times he can tell the fucking difference I could if you put the songs back to back, yeah, but like if I was listening to the 50th anniversary of Sgt. Peppers and I haven't listened to Sgt. Peppers for maybe a year or maybe a few months, I probably won't notice the difference. Unless there's something really dramatic that I was like, oh yeah, that sounds different. But yeah, I think they they had an album called One where they had... This was like the first song where I really noticed a difference. It was the Hey Bulldog. The way that they had rearranged the instruments in the remix... Because, again, you usually think remixes, oh, get a classic song, like, whether it be a classical song or whether it be an actual classic hit, and just have someone, like, remix it, like, rap over it or do some other crap or just change the beat or go, waka waka, whatever the fuck DJs think that they're doing. It's a waste of time. These remixes actually use the mix of the, uh, the, the audio and actually mix it around differently so you can get a different sound and get a different feel to it. One of, again, Hey Bulldog was a song that I listened to on the one album. I'm like, oh my god, this is great. This sounds so much better than the original version. And that's what you're going to do now because this video is ending. So thank you so much for watching. I don't really know why I talk about this shit. <laughs> but hey, thanks for watching anyway. Um, and if you know any of those uh, YouTubers or websites or whatever that talk about these big one clicks, then please, or deluxe editions, please chuck them in the comments i'd love to do more research uh maybe i could do a more thorough video about you know what this means what this one means and all this kind of stuff and compare brands and stuff from images and whatever people are saying because i guess anecdotal evidence is not great anymore because it costs too much uh check out my deluxe edition video it's probably up here or down there if i remember i probably will i don't know i have a way there's my film shelf playlist again one of the two and my subscribe button it's really cool. It like allows you to see all of my content. It's like an OnlyFans account, except it's free and it's safe for work. <laughs> so it's nothing like an OnlyFans account. <laughs> Bye. Ooh. Oh, that's an awkward ending.